Welcome to In The Loop with Larry. This is our April 2024 edition. And uh, we're excited to talk through some of the key highlights that came out of Aurora's second annual Solar Trends report. So, Larry, let's talk about this first uh, set of numbers we have here. Uh, it clearly shows a significant decrease, still some growth, but a substantial decrease in growth year over year from 22 to 23. And, sure and this is residential, by the way. Yep, yep, it sure does, Warren. And just a little bit of background here for our listeners. Aurora is a design software that we use for our projects. Um, so when you get a quote from us, we've designed the project in the Aurora software, tells us how many panels we can fit, how much it should produce, um, what the design looks like, that type of thing. So they're looking at their data uh, from 20, 2021 through 2023, and they're saying, hey, in 2022, Warren, our year-over-year -year increase and the number of solar projects designed in Aurora was a 40% increase from 21 yeah. to 22. Significant. But then when you go into 2023, the year over year increase was 4%, which is significantly less of an increase. Now, it's still an increase. Um, to your point, Warren, this, this platform is primarily residential. We use it for our commercial projects as well. I know there's other companies that use it for commercial projects. But I think you're right. This is primarily re reflective of the residential market really slowing down and possibly even reducing in 2024. Right. And Aurora is a large company. There are hundreds, if not thousands of installers that use this software. So it's a large, sub significant sample size. Absolutely. Yeah. This is not a small company. They are they have a, a large number of contractors that use their platform and a lot of projects that are designed on their platform every year. Yeah. And this one's really the most disappointing statistic to me uh, come to, when you look at it is that they're saying that there's just been a substantial or there's just a substantial amount of distrust in the industry and consumers are finding or having a really hard time finding a trustworthy solar installation company. Yeah, this is very disappointing, Warren. And, and we've talked about this. You and I have talked about this on some of our other In The Loop uh, videos where yeah. we talked about how especially in the residential space, it seems like there's a lot of, of bad characters out there. And I'll just look, look through this. So in Q1 of 2023, 22% of respondents interested in solar said they were unable to find a trustworthy solar company. That's substantial. But then in Q1 2024, 44% of respondents interested in solar said it is hard to determine which companies are trustworthy. So that's the question there one is a little bit different. You know, 22% said that they're unable to find a trustworthy company. 44% said they're unable to determine which solar companies are, are or said, said it's hard to determine which solar companies are trustworthy. So it's a little bit different question, but the statistic is still alarming because if 44% of, of people interested in solar, Warren, are unable to, to, to determine if they can trust a solar company, they're probably not going to go solar. They're probably not going to be interested for long. So I think it's it's the requirement for us as a solar industry is to figure out what the issue is here, what, what's behind this and work on the challenges. Sure. And and again, for those that are, are looking, I think one of the greatest ways to find out is from the solar company's customers. Look for their reviews and ask for references and talk to them. Really good way to get insight into whether or not it's a trustworthy company. And of course, look at how long they've been in business, uh, what their values are. There, there are ways to do so but the unfortunate reality is it's a it's become a very competitive space and sometimes the race to the bottom on pricing uh it, it makes it more challenging and uh you really want to find a long-term partner that's going to be there to support you and and be honest with you up front and so there are tools and ways and we've talked about this as you said mm -hmm. larry in previous in the loops videos to do so but that is disheartening for the industry um Sure but is. I think it's a, a definitely an advantage for us. All right. So now let's talk about why homeowners are backing out of going solar. Yeah. So number one is really not a surprise worn overall project cost. Number two, poor return on investment. Number three, concerns over moving or selling a property. I don't think any of these are a major surprise. Um, and I think the way a lot of companies are getting over the overall project cost is by doing some level of financing. Right. The challenge with financing is to increase your overall project cost for the lifetime of the, of the project. So it may or may not be uh, beneficial. 
Uh, the poor return on investment, uh, I don't know what all is driving that. I think that's always been a battle between the utility companies and the solar companies. You know, how high is how high are electric rates? What are incentives looking like? Um, I think here in the Northeast, Warren, we're seeing high enough electric rates that we're seeing better returns on investment than we were, you know, several years ago, even with inflation of some of our costs. I do. But I would say, Larry, that there's no doubt that high interest rates for those that are financing it are impacting that return as well, without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's fair. High interest rates definitely hit on the poor return on investment, uh, definitely make that more significant. Um, so what, what about number three, Warren, what do you say to someone that has concerns over moving or selling a property? I mean, certainly if you sell your house, you know, three years after doing a solar project and you're unable to recoup that investment, that's a challenge. That is a challenge. And I, I would say for most people, the, the defining line should be where that payback is. Now, granted, you should be able to get more money for your house if you own solar and it's paid for and there's no uh, ongoing liabilities or loans associated with it. Uh, you should be able to get a higher price for it. But if you're moving in five years and the payback for your solar is seven years, you should probably not move forward with solar. If your payback, if it's inverse and your payback is five years and you plan on moving in 10 years, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, uh, you know, when you're selling your house, I think it's important to talk about utility costs you know, I don't know if you can share your electric bill or share what your costs have been so that if they're comparing it to another house in town, your electric bill is, is 20 bucks a month. Their electric bill is 300 bucks a month. That's that's a significant piece when you're looking at monthly costs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Super. And then finally, just this is a picture of how much residential solar in megawatts have been installed year over year. And looking at the trajectory, it just seems to be almost parabolic. Yeah, it's it's incredible, Warren. If you look back at 2010, 2010 I mean, it, that hardly even registers um, when you're looking at a at 1,000 megawatts. I mean, you know, what is that, 200 megawatts or something like that maybe. Right. And now we're looking at almost 7 gigawatts installed in 2023. It is remarkable. And, and you see a couple of jumps. There's a couple of bumps, a couple of jumps. You know, if you look at 2016 to 2019 went down before it came back up. I think we're entering another phase like that in the residential world where we've had, I think it's going to mirror like, you know, 14, 15, 16, you know, 21, 22, 23 are kind of mirroring those three years, I believe. And I think we're going to see a reduction in the next couple of years just with high interest rates. Um, some of these challenges that we're seeing with people not trusting residential solar companies. Um, I, th I think we're going to see a, a challenge here in the next year or two before it goes back up. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a, a good prediction or analysis. Uh, I think we do have the the long term, at least another eight years or so of the 30 percent ITC yep. a, as a tailwind. Um, interest rates, definitely a challenge. But once that levels out, I think we'll be uh, off to the races once again. Yep. And of course, the other thing we've talked about, Warren, is net metering in the residential world. You know, yeah. California has been hit. Some of the other, these other states are considering making changes. That's that's a big hit to the residential market. But I think you're right. I think uh, the trajectory is going to look pretty good through 2030 or so. Yeah. Super. Well, thank you, Larry. Appreciate your time. Yep. Thank you, Warren.